the entertainment on the field, provided by the United States Treasury Department, in the interest of selling Treasury bonds, is just about at an end. And the main attraction of the evening is about to go on. Here's Dick Donovan, off here to our left. He's still throwing. Right in front of me here is Tommy Burns. Here's the announcement bringing the Treasury show to a close. Listen to it now. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Well, if adjectives help, the White Sox are a cinch to beat the Yankees in this series. The Chicago City Council, in a resolution introduced by Mayor Daley, hailed the White Sox today for unusual enthusiasm, excellent ability, and unexcelled devotion, and assured the White Sox that the people of Chicago have unfailing support, unquenchable loyalty, and unreserved pride in them. The resolution did not mention the Yankees by name, but referred to them as, quote, cunning with measureless chicanery and sleepless tenacity. Mayor Daly, you know, is a great Sox fan as well as a thousand hitter. He's had two hits and two times at bat so far this summer in city council softball games. Here are the umpires. Here are the lineups. I'll let you listen to them here at Yankee Stadium. McDougal and Scarin on the infield, Noren, Mandel and Howard in the outfield, and the battery, Byrne and Barra. McKinley will be the umpire back of the plate. Beautiful night for baseball, and I hope you're going to be able to hang around for every play. And boy, this should be some game. Let's hope the White Sox get off on the right foot here tonight with Dick Donovan, a really great pitcher. Now, very shortly, after one more announcement, I imagine they'll give you the umpires. We'll hear our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, from Yankee Stadium, our national anthem.
pitchers here tonight. This fellow Byrne has had a remarkable control record this year, which is amazing for him. Byrne has won eight and lost two. Against the White Sox, he's one and one. And his lifetime record against the White Sox, seven and six. Donovan, a right-hander, whose fastball is an actual slider, is 13 and three. In 1955, this season, he is three and nothing, and that is his lifetime record. Beautiful night. The Yankees are in white. The White Sox are in traveling gray. Maya coaching at third, Gutteridge at first, Lawler's back in the lineup. Minoso in his leadoff spot where he has started to shine and looked a little bit like himself again is waiting off to the side of the plate. The left-hand pitcher, Byrne, is getting in his practice throws and we're just about set to roll. Tommy Byrne has allowed 32 runs this year. 26 of those runs were earned. He's had 35 strikeouts, and he's walked 39 batters. Minoso, who's stepping up to lead off, is batting 260, and has 35 runs batted in. The first pitch of the game is a ball that's high. Game is underway. Latecomers are milling around in the aisles. It's a beautiful night. Burn is into the motion again, and a strike call around the knee. Now this is a triple deck stand, Yankee Stadium. It extends out into left field and out into right field, and then there's a tremendous open face bleacher all the way across center field. Next pitch, outside at the shoulder, ball two. Tommy Byrne has won three of his last four starts. Beat the White Sox at Chicago in his last starting assignment, 4-3, to three, on Howard's home run in the eighth inning. That's a ball way outside. That game evened his season record against the Sox at 1-1 one and, one, and made his lifetime record against his former teammates 7-6. and six. The 3-1 pitch is coming up at Yankee Stadium. Byrne pitching to Minoso. It is on the way. And it's hit a fly ball into left center field that's going to be caught by Norrin. He's camping under the ball, one out. One out. That'll bring up Nelson Fox. Fox, a 312 hitter with 41 runs batted in. Fox had a rough day Sunday in the doubleheader against the Boston Red Sox. There are those that feel that Fox should hit left-handers very well. Here's a strike in across the knee. Fox is a tremendous bunter, as most of you know, but for some reason or other, he seldom bunts against left-handers, who, when they go through with their motion, are frequently off stride and would have a hard time feeling a bunt down the third base line. Here's a pop-up. Just up the third base line, about 20 feet, Yogi Berra goes up the line, catches that ball, 20 feet up the line, and about one foot foul, two out. George Kell coming up. George Kell has hit safely in 21 of his last 25 games going into tonight's game. He's driven in 20 runs during that period, strike calls, and has raised his season average from 263 to 311. His record during the streak, 37 hits for 91 times at bat, nine doubles and one home run for a mark of 407. Here's what you would call a smart hitter, scientific hitter, whichever term you want to use, or some synonym for those. But he is. He hits to all fields, hits down both foul lines, and is a real clever man with that bat. 
There's a ball. It's wide, one and one. Two out in the first inning. The pitcher burned. The White Sox pitcher will be Donovan. Now they pitch to Cal way outside a ball. George Kell, number one in the back of his gray traveling uniform. And a swing and a tip foul. In the American League, Detroit leads Baltimore 6-4 to four at the end of seven. Washington leads Kansas City 8-3 to three at the end of seven. In the National League, the Giants beat the Cubs in extra innings 6-5. Tomorrow, the game at 2 o'clock New York time. Thursday, game at 2 o'clock New York time. Here we have a 2-2 count on Byrne. The outfield playing normal position. Nobody swung over even a foot. Now the wind up again and the 2-2 pitch. That's a swing, a base hit to center field. There's the first hit of the game. As he lined that ball past the pitcher, shoulder high into center field. Since the All-Star game, Dropo has hit at a 373 clip with 19 hits in 51 times at bat. Included in his hits the last 14 games have been three doubles, one triple, and two home runs. He's driven in 14 runs and boosted his batting average from 266 to its present 287. First pitch, a very high pop-up on the right side of the infield. McDougal right in the base path is waiting. Got it to retire the side. Now, Tommy Byrne, of late, and especially in Chicago was coming in very, very frequently with a half-speed pitch, slow curve, up around the shoulders, and he throws it not too often so that when he does throw it, it's effective. And just as, like, that, on that occasion, Dropo swung at that ball that looked as big as a basketball, and he popped it up. No runs, one hit, and one man left. The score, at the end of the first half of the first inning, White Sox, no runs, one hit, the Yankees are coming to bat. Coming up to lead off is Irv Noren. Noren batting left-handed, 254 hitter with 54 runs batted in. Donovan... Here's a swing and a hit right over third. That ball over the third baseman's head. Minoso firing the ball into second base. He's going to try. He is out at second base. Out at second base. Minoso threw a perfect strike from the foul line. Fox handled the ball. Fox had the base blocked off. Norin slid right into the glove and the ball. He is out, and if you're keeping a scorecard on this big ball game, credit him with a base hit. There's a great throw from left field. Now, Donovan had won eight straight before losing to Boston in a one-inning relief stint on Saturday. He has three wins and no losses in competition with the Yankees, winning 5-3, to 2-1, to one, and 8-6. to six. He has pitched four shutouts and has an earned run average of 2.80. Now stepping in for New York is Elston Howard, 3-11 hitter with 27 runs batted in. Number 32 in the back of his white uniform, a ball that's close. In the big Boston-Cleveland game, it's Sullivan, a right-hander, against Score, a left-hander. One out here, Yankees batting, no score, last of the first inning, 
A great throw by Minoso. Cut Norin down at second base, trying for a double. Ball, it's close. Ball two. Kell, Carrasquel, Spike, Fox, Dropo on the infield. In the outfield, it's Minoso in left field. Busby in center field. And Bob Neiman with his right wrist taped up playing in right field. Sherman Lawler is back in behind the plate. Ball two and a strike one count and a swing and a miss. That time he threw him a big curveball. Now this uh, Donovan's fastball is a natural slider. And that is his number one pitch. That's his money pitch. He also throws a curveball occasionally. Got a pretty good fastball and he's got good control. And he keeps that ball low. And what I mean by good control is this. Donovan has pitched 132 innings and given 30 bases on ball. 132 innings, 30 bases on ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. He went for one a foot outside and low. For Donovan, that is his 63rd strikeout of the year. Don't get away from that radio tonight. This is going to be some game. If anybody knocks or rings the bell, let them stay out in the hall. This is a game here tonight. You won't want to miss a play. This place is positively electric here tonight. The New York Yankees have come home off a road trip. And the Chicago White Sox, who are banging at that door, are here tonight. And here's Gil McDougal's spike call. He tried to hold up. And I cannot be sure whether that was a call strike or whether the umpire has indicated that he swung halfway around. But anyway, it's a strike. Kell guarding the foul line. Chico. Pretty far over, almost right in between second and third. Frankie Crosetti coaching at third. Bill Dickey over at first. A twister, strike called on the outside corner. Big Dick Donovan. 13 and 3 against Tommy Byrne, 8 and 2. In this big ball game tonight at Yankee Stadium. Donovan bends way forward, looks down, here's the pitch. A ball, it's low outside. Ball one and a strike two count. Latecomers are still coming in. Donovan is kicking the pitching rubber. The field looks in real good shape. That grass is just as green as a golf course. McDougal, with a 280 batting average and 35 runs batted in, has somewhat changed the stance that he brought with him from Beaumont, Texas, and which you would notice immediately. There's a curve and a line hit to left field. He hit a curveball and slaps it over the left side of the infield for hit number two. Here's Yogi Berra. Berra, famous Yankee catcher and Iron Man, among co-owner Dan Topping's guests tonight, seated right back of us here, our former Governor Dewey of New York and the present Governor Collins of Florida. Yogi Berra, 275 hitter, with 66 runs batted in. And a dangerous man with a bat in his hand. Ball at slow. Norn let off with a single, was out trying to get a double. Howard struck out. McDougal hit a half speed curveball and lined it into left field for a hit. Yogi Berra, the batter, a fastball that's too low, ball two.
Yogi Berra. White Sox keep up a line of chatter out there in the infield. Cal Carrascal, Fox, Dropo. Fox is pulled way over towards first base. The right fielder, Neiman, is standing right in front of the fence. It's only 315 feet here in New York down the foul lines, but the stand arches out then abruptly. Base runner on first base edging. That's a ball low and outside. Ball three. Mickey Mantle is in the on-deck circle. Yankee base runner on first base. Yogi Berra, the hitter. Donovan again picks up the rosin bag. The outfield is swung way to the right. That is a ball he walked in. Let's pause here for station identification. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. This is WCFL, the voice of labor in Chicago. Mickey Mantle, a switch hitter, batting left-handed against the right-hand pitcher, has a batting average of 304 and has had 64 runs batted in. Ball, it's too low. He's having a little bit of trouble getting the ball over. Now the second baseman, Nully Fox, walks in. Nully's got a big chew in his left cheek. There he goes. Somebody back here, y'all get the midget out of there. <laughs> Nelly Fox. Ball one, two on and two out, last of the first inning. Kenny has the sign. There's a ball. It's off the corner at the knee. Ball two. Scourin is in the on deck circle. Donovan again takes his glove off and roughs the ball around in his hands. Takes a look at the base runners. McDougal out on second base. Yogi Barrow over on first base. And a ball. It's outside again. At seven straight wide ones. Time is called. And manager Marty Marion is coming out to the mound. Your Marty Marion is out in the center of the diamond. Tomorrow it's going to be Harry Bird, five and four, a right-hander against Lopez. Those are the definite pitching choices for tomorrow. Both announced. Harry Bird, a right-hander against Lopez, a left-hander. In the final game, it'll be Turley for New York, and I believe Trucks for the White Sox. Next pitch is a ball. He walked him, loading the bases. And so the White Sox are faced with an alarming situation as early as the first inning here at Yankee Stadium. As after Noren singled and was out trying for two, Howard struck out, McDougal singled, Vera and Mantle have walked on eight straight pitches and the bases are loaded with Yankees and Scourin, a 346 hitter with 41 runs batted in, is up. This is a good time to get out any good luck piece that you have or four-leaf clovers because this is an alarming situation in the first inning. Scourin 
A boy from Weber High School, Chicago, who went to Purdue University, is a stocky right-hand hitter. Number 14 on the back of his white uniform, and the first pitch to him, a swing and a ground ball to Chico, should get it. The play to second, and it's out. Got out of the jam. I didn't think he was going to get him. He threw the ball to second base, and Mandel is arguing about it. I thought they were going to miss him, but they got him, and he is out of the jam. Scarron slapped the ground ball to deep short that Carrasquel made a fine stop on, fired the ball to Fox, and Mickey Mantle is forced out at second base on a play that's so close, I hate to even think about it. He's still arguing with the second base umpire about it. In the inning, no runs, two hits, two walks, Three men were left on the base. And the score at the end of the first inning, the White Sox, no runs, one hit. The Yankees, no runs, and two hits. Leading off is Bob Neiman, a 263 hitter with 41 runs batted in. And a ball, it's slow. Here's a final score. Washington, nine runs, 12 hits, two errors. Kansas City, three runs, nine hits and no error. That's the first win in a long time for Porterfield, who's been sidelined with a bum back. Neiman swings. A high short fly into right field. Should be easy for the second baseman or the right fielder. Howard is going to take it. One out. Center fielder Jimmy Busby batting 241 with 31 runs batted in. No score. Second inning. But the White Sox had a terrific scare in the first inning. Bases loaded and scouring up. First pitch to Jim. A little bit too low. A ball. Ball one. Tommy Byrne depends on slow balls, curves, Pops a fastball in there once in a while. Change-ups. Here's a bunt down the third baseline, but it's going to go foul. Foul ball. In the National League, Brooklyn at Cincinnati, Philadelphia at Milwaukee, and Pittsburgh at St. Louis. Those are all night games. In the afternoon game, the New York Giants defeated the Cubs 6-5. This is the first game of a three-game series with an afternoon game tomorrow, Wednesday, and an afternoon game on Thursday. One out in the second inning, and Busby the batter. Busby hit a high outside pitch on a line in the right field. White Sox hit number two. Two hits apiece, no score. Now, Carrasquel... In the last week or so, has really started to pull that ball hard to left field. And I noticed out here tonight in batting practice, boy, he was really hitting that ball. His average, 258, with 32 runs batted in. Must be over on first base. Quick throw over, back in plenty of time. Getting a sign again, and a spike gets around the knee. One strike. Lawler is in the on-deck circle. Next pitch is too low, a ball. Yogi Berra was ready to fire that ball down to second base. He thought the base runner was going to go, but Busby, after leaping off to try to upset the pitcher, stayed there. We'll keep you posted every inning on the Cleveland-Boston game as we get it. Next pitch, a swing and a foul tip. Ball one and spike two. 
Andy Carey at third. Hunter at short. McDougal at second. Scourin at first. Noren, Mantle, Hunter, or Howard in the outfield. Yogi Berra back at the plate. Left-hander Tommy Byrne, eight wins and two losses, is on the mound. Busby edging, there he goes. Here's the throw down, and he is in there. The ball rolls in the center field, and he's going to go to third base. Let's see how they score it now. It'll be a stolen base, that's for sure. And an error for Barra on the throw. That's it. Score that if you're keeping a scorecard. A stolen base for Busby and an error for Yogi Berra. For Busby, that is his eighth stolen base of the year. Covering second base on the play was McDougal. Berra threw the ball after McDougal had gotten to second base. He threw the ball over to the first base side of second. McDougal tried to double back and grab the ball, but he couldn't, and it went out into right center field, and Busby goes to third. Now we have a ball, two, strike, two count, a swing and a miss. Carrascal just struck out with a good scoring chance. Man on third and only one out. For Tommy Byrne, that is his 36th strikeout of the year. The Tigers and the Orioles are playing a twi-night doubleheader, and they're tied in that first game in extra innings, six and six. Now here is Sherman Lawler, a 270 hitter, with 42 runs batted in. And on third, a swing and a foul is going out of play off here to the right. One strike. Well, Chico had a great chance there to get his 33rd RBI of the year with Busby of speedball on third base and only one out. But he struck out. He went for a low curveball and struck out. Byrne had 35 strikeouts going in, so he now has 36. Andy Carey pulled over near the bag at third. Billy Hunter, hands on his hips, deep at short. Mantle right in line with center field. Left fielder is Noren, the right fielder is Howard. And Tommy Byrne looks at the base runner, Busby. Now he's ready. Two out. The pitch. High. Outside. A ball. Tommy Byrne roughs a new baseball around in his hands. He didn't like that one after looking at it. Got a new one from umpire McKinley. That is a ball. It's high inside again. Ball two and a strike one count. Cleveland scored a run in their half of the first inning at Boston. The Red Sox are now batting. The pitchers are Score and Sullivan. We'll give you an inning-by-inning inning report on that game as well as keeping you posted just as frequently as we can. On that one, here's a swing and a foul during the course of this game because... Those two teams, Cleveland and Boston, are right up in the thick of this race, too. Here the Sox have a scoring chance in the second inning. It was better a few minutes ago when Busby was on third with one out. He's still there with two out. The Yankees had a good scoring chance in their half of the first inning. They had the bases loaded with two out, and Scourin grounded to Chico, who got a force out at second, on a hairline decision. Tommy Byrne fidgeting around, taking a lot of time. That's a swing and a very high infield fly. Here's the first baseman, Scourin, coming down the line, and he grabs that ball for the end. 
Aaron came down toward the plate about two-thirds of the way from first to the plate and about three feet foul to take that ball. On the way down, his cap blew off, and he was visibly staggering because he wasn't sure whether Barrow was going to try to get it. He looked at him two or three times and ran around in a bit of a circle. He was afraid of a collision. But Yogi Berra jumped out of the way, and he caught the ball for the out. In that inning, no runs, one hit, and one man left on the base. The score at the end of the first half of the second inning, the White Sox, no runs, two hits. The Yankees, no runs, two hits. Now the first batter for New York will be Andy Carey, batting 257, then Byrne, 214, and then Hunter, 244. Here's a fly ball into right field. It should be caught, and it is caught. Hunter hit a fly ball deep into right field, and Neiman went back and caught it for the odds. Byrne has had nine hits in 42 at bat. Batting average of 214. In the Brooklyn Cincinnati game, it's Don Newcomb against Menarsen for Cincinnati. Tommy Byrne bats left handed. And I'll never forget that ball game here at Yankee Stadium when he came up for the White Sox and hit a grand slam home run into those right field stands against the New York Yankees. Tommy will never forget it either because he told me in Chicago that that was one of the top thrills that he's had in baseball. Spike right in there. Kell, Carrasquel, Fox, Dropo. In the infield, the outfield, Minoso, Busby, and Neiman. The battery... Donovan and Lawler. And a swing and a tap on the ground. Tough chance. The pitcher going to get it and runs to the bag. He made the play himself. Here was a ground ball between first and the mound, but closer to first base. It was taking high, slow hops, and the pitcher running over for the ball kept right on going and beat the batter to the to first base for an unassisted play, something that you seldom see. Billy Hunter batting in the ninth spot. Hunter has a batting average of 244 and has 20 runs batted in. No score at New York. We're in the last of the second. Each team has threatened once. Sox had the best chance. They had a man on third with one out. Here comes the pitch. A ball. It's low. Yankees had the bases loaded in the first inning with two out and Scourin hit into a force out. In the Pittsburgh Cardinal game, the pitchers are Littlefield and Arroyo. And a swing and a very high fly ball. It's foul down the first baseline. There's a play on the ball. Dropo leans in and grabs that ball for the out. Walt Ropo leaned right in among the cash customers and grabbed that ball for the up. So it's three up and three down, no runs, no hits, no errors. At the end of two full innings of play at Yankee Stadium in New York, White Sox, no runs, two hits, no errors. Yankees, no runs, two hits, and one error. In the Philadelphia-Washington second game, Shea against Kellner. Dick Donovan is stepping into the batter's box, and as you Sox fans all know, he's a good hitter. He's been at bat 52 times, strike called, and has made 10 hits.
Donovan, number 22, batting left-handed against the southpaw burn. And a big swing and a miss. Strike two. Yankees in white. Andy Carey, Billy Hunter, Gil McDougal, and Bill Scourin around that Yankee inner defense. Nobody on and nobody out in the next pitch to Donovan. That's a swing out of miss. He struck him out. Strikeout number two for Byrne and his 37th of the year. Now, the thing that surprised me in looking over Byrne's pitching record was that he has pitched 79 innings and given up in that time only 39 bases on balls. So you see that the big thing about Byrne, since we saw him with the White Sox a few years ago, his control has improved tremendously. Minoso takes a ball, it's slow. Now, of course, he has his streaks of wildness, but boy, I can remember when Byrne would, it seems like, as I look back on those days, when he'd walk every other man. But that was the big bugaboo with Byrne. Minnie Minoso going into the game with a 260 batting average and 35 runs batted in. High fly ball this time, but short again, this time to right field. Howard right under the ball. He's out, two away. That's the same kind of a fly ball he hit the first time, only this time to the opposite field. There's Fox. Fox fouled off to the catcher the first time up. Nellie Fox in the batter's box. Byrne takes a look around. Everybody, the outfield is shortened up. Third baseman Andy Carey is in on the grass. And here is the pitch, a big swing and a miss. And the mighty might spun like a top that time, missing a curveball up around the left. Two out and nobody on in the third inning. No score in this ball game. And a swing and a line drive down the right field line. Hit! And it drops in for a long single. Howard gets that ball in. That's hit number three for the White Sox. Let's pause here quickly for station identification. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. Cal single the first time up. Fox on first base. There are two out. It's the third inning and the pitch. A swing and a fly ball. A hit is going to drop in right center. And it does drop out there for Cal's second hit. And Fox goes to third. Hit number four. George Cal hit a low fly ball into right center field, right in between Mickey Mantle and Elston Howard, and it dropped for a clean hit, his second hit, and Fox goes to third. Here is Walt Ropo. Come on, First time up, Gropo hit an infield fly to Gil McDougal. Runners on first and third with two away. Left-hander Tommy Byrne pitching to a big right-hand hitter, Walt Gropo. He set. That's a high outside pitch, ball one. That was a rising fastball that the catcher, Yogi Berra, leaned out to get just about up around the shoulders and all of a sudden he had to leap into the air as that ball, that pitch had a rise to it. Ball one. The outfield is straight away. That's a ball way outside above the knee. Ball two. In the on-deck circle is Bob Neiman who's playing in right field tonight. 
Bob has been sidelined for a couple of weeks after being plunked on the wrist, and his right wrist is taped. Tommy Byrne pitching to Dropo. The next pitch to him, a swing and a foul right here in front of us, up on the screen. And it's a ball two and a strike one count. Tommy Byrne takes his glove off, roughs the ball around in his hand. No National League scores as yet. No score in this game. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, no errors. Yankees, no runs, two hits, and one error. Perfect night for baseball. First game of a big game, big series here. And we have afternoon games tomorrow and again on Thursday. The weekend in Washington. All two, strike one for Dropo. And a swing and another foul. Back on the wire. Two and two. The White Sox dugout is to our left. We're just a little bit to the right of home plate. With the Yankee dugout here to our right. This is a tremendous place, Yankee Stadium. Tremendous. You'd have to see it. You'd have to be sitting here and look up to your right and to your left to really realize how big a place this is. Open face bleacher in left field, all the way across center to right field. Big scoreboard lit up like a Christmas tree, high up above the stands in right center field. It's a poke there. You got to hit it over 400 feet to get it in those stands. Ball two and a strike two count. That's a ball, shoulder high and wide. And we have a full count as the Yankee bat boy takes a new supply of baseballs up to the plate umpire, McKinley. Nelson Fox on third base. George Kell on first base. Two out in the top of the third inning and no score. Tommy Byrne, arms up in front of him, getting ready. That's a ball. He almost hit him. The bases are low. That pitch almost hit him, and the bases are loaded. And here is Bob Neiman stepping into the batter's box at Yankee Stadium with Fox on third, Kell on second, Gropo on first, and two up. Base is loaded. That is a strike in around the knee. Came in with a slow one that time. Well, just a hit here would send the White Sox winging. Bases are loaded. One strike on Bob Neiman. Number 18 on the back of his gray uniform. Here's the next pitch. A swing and a tap on the ground to the shortstop. He's going to get him. He does. The first pitch. Neiman bounced to the shortstop. A slow ground ball taking big hops. Hunter had to come way in and fire that ball. He got him by at least two big steps. That retires the side. In the inning, no runs, two hits, a walk, and three men were left on the base. And the score at the end of the top of the third inning, the White Sox nothing, the Yankees nothing. Noren up, strike, in around the knee. Noren single the first time up and was out, trying for two. On Minoso's great throw off the foul line. Noren is the left-hand hitter. And the next pitch to him... Outside, right at the knee, a ball, one and one.
Each team has had a bases loaded situation. Each team went out the same way on a ground ball to the shortstop. Now the pitch to Norin, a ball, a slow inside. That was a twister that was breaking in on his hands. And in falling away from the ball, he his leg gave in, uh, gave out from under him, and he fell on the ground, but he's up now. He's okay. Ball two and a strike one count. Norn Batty, third inning. Nobody on, nobody out, no score. Donovan with the rosin bag. Here is a swing and a miss. There was a terrific slider right in across the knee. Two and two. 254 hitter. Here's the next pitch. A swing and a miss. Struck him out. Boy, he popped that ball in right below the knee. That is the second strikeout for Donovan and his 64th strikeout of the year. The Boston-Cleveland game is nothing and nothing at the end of two innings. The pitchers, Sullivan, a right-hander, score a left-hander. Elston Howard, 311 hitter with 27 runs batted in, and a swing in the middle. Now, Teddy Williams, in a visit we had with him the other night when he was the guest on our show, for an hour and a half before the show, we had a bite and had a chat, he said he thought this fellow showed promise of becoming one of baseball's greatest hitters. And the only thing that kept him from it now, he said he needs another year until he really and truly learns to pick out that real good pitch. That is a strike right down the middle. Now he swung at one that was way outside, and he just took one here that was perfect. Maybe that's what Williams had reference to. But Howard is a young ball player. This is his first year in the big leagues. Donovan steps off the rubber. That is a ball, though. I read you before the game started the endorsement for the White Sox by the city council and Mayor Daly today. And it's a great boost for the ball club. It appeared in the late papers here in New York. And a curve. It's low and outside. Two and two. Final paragraph, be it resolved that we hereby express our confidence and serene optimism that the Chicago White Sox will truly embody the spirit of I will and march forward to victory. Dated the 26th day of July, Richard J. Daly, mayor of Chicago, and as you fans all know, Dick is a really great Sox fan and booster. Ball two, strike two. Now Howard gets tired of waiting and walks out of the batter's box. This game is in the bottom of the third. No score. White Sox, no runs, four hits. Yankees, no runs. Here's the pitch. And a very high foul that's going out of play off here to the right. No play on that ball. Elston Howard, a number 32 in the back of his white uniform. This fellow has as wide a stance as I've seen in the big leagues. Comparable somewhat to a fellow that you may recall easier than this fellow, Junior Stephen. Here's a ball, high inside, and Howard falls down to get out of the way, and we have another 3-2 count. Yes, sir, the White Sox are on Broadway. And here's a showdown series at Yankee Stadium. This is the first game of three, and it's under the lights on a perfect night for baseball. 
with Donovan, a great right-hander, against Tommy Byrne. 13-3 and three and 8-2. and two. Big pitch coming up. Oh, he almost hit him again. Ball four. Howard was almost hit with a very high inside pitch twice. And that one was closer than the other one. This one really sent him down. It decked him in a hurry. And that is ball four. And that becomes the third base on balls given up by Dunn. Here's McDougal. Base hit the first time up. over on first base and a ball he was almost hit high inside ball one now that is the third straight time that a very high inside pitch and you notice this uh, when Dunneman does it because Dick usually has marvelous control I told you that he given up only 30 bases on balls in over 130 innings of pitching. Ball one. And a curve that's high. Ball two. Now this is no time to start the bases on balls because the tough boys are coming up here. Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle, and Skaran. And you can only get away with bases on balls against this club so often. In the first inning, after a hit, he gave a walk to Mantle and a walk to Barra and got out of a jam. And now, after one out, he's walked Howard and has a 2 and nothing count on McDougal, and time has been called. Here's a conference at the mound. The Detroit-Baltimore game is, at the end of 12 innings, tied at 6-6. Six and six. Now Donovan, again with the rosin bag, dries his hands. Here's the pitch, a swing and a very high, long foul is curving, out of play. That ball was curving just as soon as it was hit. There was no doubt but what that was going to be a foul ball from the second it left the bat. So there's no use alarming you needlessly. Let's just say that that ball was foul all the way. Ball two, strike one. No so in left field. Busby in center field. Neiman in right field. The infield is Kell, Carrasquel, Fox, and Ropo. We're looking right out there. White Sox in gray, the Yankees in white. Big crowd tonight. Perfect night. Ball two, strike one. Here it is. A very high foul. It's out of play to the right. And so we have a ball two and a strike two count on McDougal. 280 hitter going into the game with 35 runs batted in. Donovan pulls at his cap. Now he's set. Now he's doing something tonight that they objected to in Chicago. Picks the rosin bag up. Puts the rosin bag on the ball while it's in the glove. But here tonight, there's been no objection. After he gets the rosin bag in his bare hand, he puts it on the ball in the glove and pulls his cap. Here's the pitch. That's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Cut that ball in real fast. In around the knees on the inside corner. And McDougal missed that ball at Yankee Stadium by a foot. That is strikeout number three and his 65th strikeout of the year. Get out that good luck talisman now. Here is Yogi Berra. Here 
there's a conference at the mound, and just as I'm talking about that, the umpire has gone out to caution Donovan about putting the rosin bag on the ball in the glove. I no sooner got that out of my mouth. Well, don't blame me because the ump can't hear what I'm saying here. We are far away from the plate. But just after I said it, the umpire walked out and talked to Donovan. And he was talking to him about picking the rosin bag up and putting it on the ball while he had it in the glove. Here's a ball, high outside, ball one. Yogi Walk, the first time up. A 275 hitter going into the game with 66 runs batted in. Bob Elson describing the ball game from Yankee Stadium. The house that Babe Ruth built. Where the lights are flickering here tonight on a terrific night for baseball. And one of the most important baseball series of the year. A ball that's off the corner above the knee. Ball two. Base runner is Elston Howard. There are two out in the bottom of the third inning. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, no error. The Yankees, no runs, two hits, one error. Cleveland, Boston, nothing and nothing at the end of three innings. Sullivan and score. Two and nothing count for Yogi Berra. And a strike of beauty right around the knee. Ball two and they spike one count on the Yogi man. Ball two, strike one. Howard edging off first base. Here's the pitch. A ball, it's off the corner. Ball three, three and one. Remember, in Chicago tomorrow night, there's a real good fight out at Arthur Wirtz's Chicago Stadium. Chuck Spicer was our guest tonight on our 6 o'clock show in Chicago. A real good, promising young battler. Ball three, strike one count. There's plenty of time. You're not missing anything here because Donovan goes through the... Here's the pitch. The runner going. A swing and a ground ball to Fox. He should get him easily. The ball is in the... He's a goner. He slapped hard on the ground to Fox. Fox took plenty of time. Picked that ball up and he threw the Yogi man out by 20 feet. The reason I said there's time to talk about different things is because Donovan takes plenty of time and there's no reason why he shouldn't. This is a big ball game. He takes very, very deliberate there with every pitch. So when I do say something or refer to something, it's when nothing is going on out there on the mound. In that inning, no runs, no hits, a walk, one man left on the beat. So here are the complete totals for three innings. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, no errors, have five left. The Yankees, no runs, two hits, one error, four men left on the bench. Jimmy Busby will lead off in the fourth inning. Hits a very high, towering fly ball back a short. Billy Hunter backing up, should get it easily, and he does. Put that one away, one out. Busby hit the first pitch and lofted one high behind short. The shortstop, Billy Hunter, backed way up on the grass and took it easily for the out. At Boston, Doby just homered for Cleveland. It puts the Indians ahead of Boston, one to nothing in the fourth inning. Carrascal struck out first time up. And a ball, a little bit too low. Ball one. Tommy Byrne. Here's a swing and a ground ball to the shortstop. Third baseman cut in front of him. Carey firing. He's out. Two away. Andy Carey. Cut in front of the shortstop putter who was deep. And threw Chico out for the second out. 
That will bring up Sherm Lawler, who fouled out to the first baseman the first time up. 270 batting average, 42 runs batted in. No score, fourth inning, Yankee Stadium, White Sox and the Yankees. Tommy Burns, left-hander, leans forward on his left foot. Here is a curveball. It's way outside, ball one. Two out and nobody on. Next pitch to Sherman Lauder, a strike of beauty right across the way. One and one. In the National League, Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Nothing and nothing at the end of one. The Phillies are at Milwaukee tonight. The Phillies have really been red hot. Two out and nobody on in the fourth inning. And a ball way high and outside, two and one. Pitcher Donovan is due up next. Burns stands there on the rubber, goes into his motion, and a slow ball comes in very low, ball three. In the game tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock your time. It's going to be Harry Bird, a right-hander, against Lopez. And Bullet Bob Turley is scheduled to pitch the finale Thursday afternoon. Sox play Washington, a night game on Friday, single game on Saturday, and a doubleheader on Sunday. Ball three and a strike one count. That's a swing and a miss. Burn, every once in a while... And not too often, Burns really burns one in there. And that time he did. Across the waist, and Lawler swung and missed for a full count. Ball three, strike two. Burns taking plenty of time. Wind up, and here's the next pitch. Too low, base on ball. to bring up the pitcher, Donovan. Here's Donovan stepping around to the first base side of the plate, a big fellow. In the first Detroit-Baltimore game that went extra innings, the Tigers won 8-6. to six. That is a final score in the first game of a twi-night doubleheader. Donovan batting with Lawler on first, and a swing and a very high foul fly. near the, No, it's going to go over the Yankee uh, dugout into the crowd at one spot. While we have time, the first baseman talking to somebody, let's pause for station identification. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. This is WCFL, the voice of labor in Chicago. Here's a swing and a miss, strike two. Donovan. Went all the way around, trying to give that fastball a ride. Strike two. Lawler over on first. At strike three, right down the middle. And he took it with the bat on his shoulder. Now, Byrne, who usually toys around between pitches, got that ball back, and boom, he fast pitched him that time. Nothing illegal. He was in the batter's box, but he... He didn't toy around at all. He just bang right back in there, and he struck him out. For Byrne, 
That is his third strikeout of the night and his 38th strikeout of the year. The score at the end of the first half of the fourth inning, the White Sox, no runs on four hits. The Yankees, no runs on two hits. Coming up to lead off, Mickey Mantle. Mantle walked in the first inning. 304 batting average and 64 runs by the ground ball to Fox. Big hop, he's got it. There's the peg, he's out, one away. Now that ball was hit very sharply, very hot at Fox, taking low hops to his right to the second base side. He grabbed the ball to his right and turned a complete circle and fired. He had plenty of time to get Mantle to the out. Here is Scourin, first base. 346 hitter going in with 41 runs batted in, 0 for 1. Wind up in the first pitch to him. Too close. Above the knee, ball one. Scourin, number 14. One out and nobody on. Last of the fourth inning. Baseball at Yankee Stadium under the lights. The outfield is playing straight away. There's a curve and he grounds it foul. Right into the White Sox dugout. This fellow told me a thing that surprised me one night. He was on my show at 6 o'clock and we were talking baseball and he said, you know, they take me out against right-hand pitchers and let me play against left-hand pitchers. He said, well, I've been in organized baseball. I've hit over 80 home runs and I've hit something like 73 or 74 of those against right-hand pitchers rather than left-hand. That was a surprising thing and I was telling, telling Williams about that and he was surprised too. But that's a fact. A ball one and a strike one count, and a swing and a miss. He sidearmed him that time and came in with that ball on the outside corner at the waist. And Scourin, Big Moose, took a cut and missed. One and two. Donovan drying his hands. Picks the rosin bag up again. Now he's leaning way forward. Scourin gets tired of waiting and steps out. Now, Donovan is not dropping the rosin bag on the ball in the glove anymore. Now, he picks it up in his bare hand, tucks it up under his arm and pulls at his chest. Here's the pitch, and it's high inside a ball. He was cautioned by the plate umpire from putting the rosin bag on the ball in the glove. Two and two. Ball two and a strike two count. He's all set again. That's a curve, and here's a fly ball to left. Minnie going back. The ball's over his head. The ball's gone to the scoreboard in left center. He's around second on the way to third. They may get him. He's in the dirt. He is out at third base. The play went from Minoso to Carrasquel to Kell. Minoso misjudged the ball. He came in, and the ball went over his head. Then ran back to the scoreboard. The relay got him. Minoso to Carrasquel to Kell. He was out on an eyelash play at third base. If you're keeping a scorecard, credit Scourin with a double, and the White Sox with a terrific relay play, Chico with a perfect peg to the hot corner, and Kell a dive at Scourin, and he got it. Man, what thrills here at New York. Here's Perry. Here's a swing and a line drive in the right. It's going to drop in for a hit. And again, the White Sox get that base runner killed on the bases where he could do some good. That is with the Yankees. 
For example, had he stayed at second base, he would have scored because that ball was placed perfectly into right center field. That is hit number four. Gee, that was a terrific relay play. Going to bring up the pitcher, Tommy Byrne, with a base runner on first base and two out. Well, I hope that Mayor Daly and the members of the city council that passed that resolution are not having heart attacks, but boy, this is that kind of a ball game. Nothing, nothing. This is a big one. This is one of the biggest ball games of the year. Psychologically, this first game of the Yankee series is a game of tremendous import. It is nothing and nothing in the last of the fourth inning. The Yankees have carry on first base and Burn is the batter. There are two outs. Now Donovan gets ready. Here's a swing and a miss. He went all the way around trying to give that ball a ride. That was the curveball. Curve, slider, there's fastball which slides, change up, and always around the knee. You don't get any of those fat pitches up around the letters from Mr. Donovan. That's why he is 13 and 3. Those are the kind that go out of the park. One strike on Burns. Here's a fastball, low outside a ball, one and one. Starham's drive went over Minoso's head in left field. And Minoso looked from here as though he had lost the ball in the lights. He started in and then ran frantically back and the ball had gone over his head to the auxiliary scoreboard, which is on the ground in left center and in right center. Here's a swing and a high fly ball. Right field. Right fielder coming in. Should get it. And he does. In that inning, no runs, two hits, one man left. And the score at the end of four innings of play. The score... The White Sox, no runs, four hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, four hits, and one error. This is a real rough, tough ball game, just what it figured to be. Here's Minoso. And a ball, a little bit too low. McKinley, doing a good job in there tonight, back of the plate on balls and strikes. He's got couple of guys in there trying to keep that ball in there low and Donovan is really a low ball pitcher that is a swing a drive down the first baseline it's going to be caught I believe it is there was a line drive placed down the first baseline into the right field corner and Howard was sure playing him over near the line that time and caught it that was a very well hit ball one out boy I was sure surprised in watching the flight of that ball to see Howard playing over so close in right field toward the line. Here's Fox. One for two. Now the wind up in the first pitch to Fox. A pop-up coming back. I don't think Yogi has a play. Nope. It just went into the first few rows there of the boxes. One strike. In the National League, Brooklyn won and Cincinnati nothing at the end of one. Pittsburgh won, St. Louis nothing at the end of two. Nothing up on Philly, Milwaukee. Boston Red Sox scored two runs on Cleveland, and they're leading the Indians two to one at the end of four innings. Sullivan and score. Fox batting in the fifth inning with one out. Third baseman Andy Carey in way close. That is in high. Close a ball. One and one. The 
The outfield is plenty shallow. Norin in left field. Mantle is over in right center and shallow. Big hole over the shortstop's head. Boy, if he never line one there, he could roll out there to the 400-foot mark. The pitch, a swing and a foul. It's out of play off here to the left. And a one and two count. One and two. Ball one and the strike two count on him. Burn Ruddies almost hit him. I was looking at some infield records tonight. Baltimore's Willie Miranda, who is supposed to be a good field no-hit infielder, isn't doing too well this year defensively. He's made 25 errors more than any other big league shortstop. Which was an item that really surprised me. Ball two and a strike two count. Next pitch to Fox. A ball. It's high. Three two. Almost knocked his cap off the little guy that time. Glad to see Jerry Coleman in good shape. He was beamed in Chicago. Wonderful little guy, infielder with the New York Yankees. And he's in good shape. He was out there taking batting and fielding practice, and he suffered no ill effects from it. That is a swing. Here's a foul back in the way. This is the fifth inning of a scoreless ball game at Yankee Stadium. The Sox are batting in the top of the fifth inning. When also, flied down the right field line and, and the right fielder Howard caught it. And now Fox is batting. He's run up a full count. And Burns shakes his head. Got the right sign. The 3-2 pitch is coming. And it's tapped out on the ground to the second base of McDougal. Up with the ball. He's got him out easily. Two away. Here's Mr. Kell, who has two for two. Going into the game with a 311 batting average and 53 runs batted in. This guy has everybody in the Chicago contingent talking about his play. His great play around third and his tremendous hitting and clutch hitting. And as one of the Chicago writers wrote, this fella is really a pro. Kell up. Two out and nobody on, and a ball is close. Tommy Byrne, left-hander against Donovan, a right-hander. And high, way high, a ball, ball two. White Sox, no runs, four hits. No errors. The Yankees, no runs, four hits, and one error. That's a little double play on the ball game tonight. Ball is low. The White Sox have made 90 double plays. The Yankees have made 106 double plays. Three-and-nothing count on Cal. That's a swing, and he hit the cripple and fouls it down the third baseline, 3-1. Three, Big Harry Bird will pitch tomorrow for the White Sox against Lopat. And the probables for Thursday are Turley and Trucks. Pierce is expected to pitch the Friday night game against Washington. Ball three, strike one. Wind up again, and a ball, he almost hit him. Kell went down, and he really went down in a... Gets up and picks up his cap, and he's trotting the first base. The White Sox trainer came out, but... That ball missed him. It was simply ball four. (laughs) 
least that's the way it looked from here, and it did look like he was hit. The catcher caught the ball, but it was inside high, very close, and down he went. Here's Walt Tropo. Popped out the first time, walked the second time. Facing left-hander Byrne with the teammate on first. And a low outside curveball, ball one. Fifth inning. Andy Carey playing Gropo near the foul line. At the fastball, he grounds right at the shortstop. Hunter, the force play coming up at second. Out. Play went from Hunter to McDougal, forcing George Kell and retiring the side. In that inning, no runs, no hits, one left. And so in five innings, the White Sox have had seven men left on the beach. The score at the end of the first half of the fifth inning... The White Sox, no runs, four hits. The Yankees, no runs, four hits. Hunter coming up. Hunter in the batter's box. Popped out to Dropo the first time up. Boston 2 and Cleveland 1 at the end of four innings. That's all the board shows on that. Here is a ball inside high ball one. Dick Donovan. Leans way forward. That's a fastball. He grounds it foul on the ground off to the right. Nobody on and nobody out. Now they're starting the staccato clapping that you can hear in your radio here at Yankee Stadium. And a bunt down the first baseline is going to go foul. He bunted the ball, but he bunted it foul. Ball one, strike two. The Chicago White Sox have a 10 and 4 record since the All Star game and have won 11 of their last 15. They're hitting at a 288 clip for the last 14 games, getting 130 hits in 451 times at bat. They've scored 77 runs or an average of 6 plus per game. Ball one and a strike two count on Hunter. And a curveball a little bit too close. A little bit too close. Donovan shakes his head as though to say, gee, I thought that was a good one. Pittsburgh and the Cardinals are tied. One and one at the end of three. Brooklyn leads the Reds. Two to nothing at the end of two. Wind up again in the next pitch. A curve, a swing, a fly ball. Minoso going back. Grabs it for the up. Minoso having trouble with those lights. Again, stepped in, but that ball wasn't hit so deep. And he got back in time to get Hunter's fly ball for the up. I thought that he had lost that ball again. As he seemingly is having trouble with the seeing that ball in the lights. But that time, he caught the ball without too much effort. One away. Here's Herb Noren. Single and a strikeout. And a tight of beauty right around the knee. Herb Noren, the batter. Now 
Now the next pitch, a strike, a fastball, a beauty. Donovan. Getting set out there. Picks up the rosin bag. Puts it under his left arm. Pulls at his cap. Takes the rosin bag back in his bare hand. Drops it. Now he's ready. Outside, high. A ball, one and two. One out in the last of the fifth inning. Minnie Minoso in left field, Busby in center field, and Neiman in right field. Batter is Norrin. Donovan leans forward. Now the, the batter, Norrin, steps out of the batter's box. Here's a flash. Williams just hit a home run for Boston. Nobody on. The next pitch, a strike. He struck him out. Here's an argument. Norrin is called out on strike. A slow curve over the outside corner, right at the knee. And Norrin is still up at the plate, arguing with the umpire, who is not paying any attention to him. He gets out the whisk room and goes over to clean off the plate. So Norrin walks away. That is... Strikeout number four. One, two, three, four. And here is Howard, the right fielder, a ball at slow. He struck out Howard in the first inning. They got Norrin and McDougal in the third inning and struck out Norrin in the fifth inning. Now they're two out, nobody on, last of the fifth, and no score. Swing and a line hit to center field. Base hit. Howard slashed one right over the pitcher's head in the center field. That's hit number five for New York. McDougal stepping in. Boston three, Cleveland one at the end of five innings. Right hand hitter, Gil McDougal, has a hit and a strikeout and a ball that's low and outside. Ball one. Last of the fifth inning at Yankee Stadium. Kell, Carrasquel, Fox, Dropo on the infield. Minoso, Busby, Neiman in the outfield. The battery, Donovan and Lawler. Here comes the next pitch. A swing and a ground foul. Just past the White Sox dugout. The starting pitcher for Cleveland is out, score, and Santiago, a right-hander, is now pitching. Here we have Gil McDougal, 280 hitter with 35 runs batted in, in the batter's box. Elston Howard over on first base. And a swing and a... a Low line drive that the shortstop gets the second and got it. There was a low line drive to Carrasquel's right. He couldn't get it in the air and crept that ball off the ground and fired the Fox for a great play to get another very close force play of second base. Boy, there was a terrific play by Carrasquel. There was a ball hit toward the dirt to the right of Carrasquel that he couldn't get in the air. And it was very close. It was a trap off the ground on a ball hit very hard. And he whipped that ball to Fox in time to get the force out on Howard. And it retires the side. That was a swell play. In that inning, no runs, one hit. 
And one man left down the base. And so the score, at the end of five innings of play, the Yankees no runs, five hits, one error. The White Sox no runs, four hits, and no error. Well, come on, Neiman up here. Let's see if we can't get a rally a ruckus going here in Yankee Stadium. Last time, Neiman was up with the bases loaded and bounced out. Now he's the leadoff batter, and the first pitch is high, outside, ball one. Bob Neiman, the right fielder. The next pitch to him is a fastball. That's outside, ball two. nothing. Tommy Byrne says he doesn't like the feel of that ball. So the plate umpire promptly tosses him out a new one. Wonderful night for baseball. And wherever you are, I sincerely hope you're enjoying the story of this big ball game tonight at Yankee Stadium. Afternoon game tomorrow at 1 o'clock your time. And again on Thursday at 1 your time. Friday night from Washington. Byrne leans forward on his left foot. He's ready to fire. And it's a curve at the letters for a strike. 2-1. He steps back after getting some dirt on his hands. And while he's rubbing his hands together, he's talking to Hurley. And it looks to me as though he was asking him just where that pitch was. There's no argument about it. Ball two and a strike one count. Byrne leaning forward again. He's ready. Fastball. Got a piece of it and fouled it back on the wire. And now we have a 2-2 count on the first man up. Neiman will be followed by Busby and then Carrascal. Bob Neiman in right field tonight in place of Rovera. Byrne again goes to the rosin bag. Both these pitchers taking plenty of time, and you can't blame them. Every pitch counts. Ball two and strike two, and the pitch, slow ball. He hit it. A fly ball down the right field line. Howard going back, and he grabs that ball right off the wall. There was a high... Shoulder high outside slow ball, and Bob tried to hit that ball into the seat, and he got it right up against the wall down in the right field corner where Howard caught it. That came very close to being a home run. Here's Busby, one for two. Single in the second inning. Hopped out in the fourth inning. And they spike around the middle. Getting all ready again. And the pitch to Busby is way outside the ball. One and one. Harry Bird will face his former teammates tomorrow. Eddie Eddie Lopez going to do the pitching for the Yankees in the second game. A swing at a fastball and a foul tip. And it's a ball one and a strike two count. Lopat, like Donovan, has a tremendous control record. He's pitched 85 innings and in that time has given up only 15 bases on one. Ball one and a strike two count on Busby. And a swing and a foul back in the wire, and it's still one. Busby jumps away from an inside pitch that almost hit him in the leg. And a ball two and a strike two count. The 
Horn roughing up a new baseball. Andy Carey at third, Hunter at short, McDougal at second, Scourlin at first. And a slow, low uh, pitch way outside, very low, three and two. And again, we have a full count, one out and nobody on. So Tommy Byrne coming up with the three-two pitch. Here it is. That's a swing and a line foul past third base. Andy Carey leaped over the foul line with his gloved hand high outstretched. But that ball eluded him by three or four feet and shot on down, hit the fence that parallels the third base line and bounded out into left field where Noren retrieved it and threw it back in. And again, Byrne is getting set for the three-two pitch, the rosin bag. He's up on the rubber. One out and nobody on. This is the sixth inning. No score at Yankee Stadium as the White Sox and the Yankees battle it out here under the lights and the pitch. Outside, ball four. That pitch was high outside. And here is Carrascal. I've just been bragging about how well he'd been hitting when he came up tonight, came up tonight twice. Struck out and bounced out. Monchico. Tommy Byrne keeping an eye on the base runner. Here's the pitch, a swing and a foul. Right here in front of us on the wire. And now it is rolling back down toward the field. First game of a three-game series. One game under the lights, two in the daytime. Washington night game Friday. An afternoon game on Saturday and a doubleheader on Sunday. That's a strike call right around the knee. Boy, he, he'll never see a better strike than that. Right above the knee, right over the heart of the plate. All of the Yankee brass up here tonight, topping Webb, Weiss. Very high foul coming back here and going out of play. As I told you in the first inning, the former governor of New York, Mr. Dewey, and his wife are seated right behind us here with the Yankee party. And the present governor of Florida, Governor Leroy Collins. Two strikes on Chico. Jim Busby edging off first base. That's a ball that's low inside. One and two. The White Sox announced today securing the services of Bobby Adams. A utility infielder with the Cincinnati Red Legs and a good little ball player. Bonus baby, Bob Powell has been placed on the disabled list for the next 30 days to make room for Adams. Whether what it was with Bob, whether he hurt his ankle or... And I know it's nothing serious because he was out here in uniform tonight. Here's the next pitcher swing and a long foul down the left field line. And a new baseball has been tossed out to the pitcher. And that foul drive alarmed Yogi, and Yogi has gone out to the mound. That foul caused Yogi Berra to stop play and go out and talk with the pitcher. Ball one and strike two for Carrasquel. Sherm Lawler in the on-deck circle. No score, sixth inning. Must be on first base. One out. Burns taking a lot of time, and Chico steps up. Carrasquel 
It started back in when manager Marion yelled something from the front of the dugout. Now he's ready. Ball one and a strike two count. And a slow ball. He hits a high foul that Yogi Berra has a play on. He's back and he shot the ball. an error for Yogi Berra and that's something you seldom see he was under the ball it was very high he had plenty of time and that ball squirted out of his mug which goes to prove one thing that errors are part of the ball game and that it can happen to the best of people and as a wise man once said that's why they put erasers on punches anybody can make a mistake but that ball squirted out of his glove and dropped. So Chico gets to swing on the house here now. And that was a break. Looked like an easy out. Pitch out. The runner going. A throw. He's in the dirt. He's out. Safe. Safe at second base. Safe at second base. Busby stole second base. In the scramble down there, it looked like he had the ball in time, but as he dove at him, the umpire looked like he was going to bring his hand up, but he held it down, he saw that he missed him, and that throw was a little bit off base again, and that is a stolen base for Busby. So that is the second time tonight, that is stolen base for Busby, and that is his ninth of the year. A hit here could really pay off. Here's a pitch, a swing, and a ground foul. Well, now that drop foul by Yogi Berra could really pay a dividend here if Chico could get a hit. Tommy Byrne doesn't like the ball. He's going to get a new one. Chico standing off to the side of the plate. Busby, a fast runner on second base. Just got his second stolen base of the night. And again, Yogi was off the target on the throw. Ball two, strike two. One out. Sixth inning. No score. Sox base runner on second. Burn arms in front of him. Here's the pitch. A swing and a top fly. Back of first base. Easy for Scourin. Back under the ball, has it easily. He backed up about 20 feet behind first base and two feet fair to take that ball, parked under it, and it's going to bring up Sherman Love. Time is called, and there is going to be a conference out at the mound. Yogi Berra keeps looking toward the dugout for a word from manager Stengel. Now normally when you've got a catcher and a good hitter up here and the pitcher coming up next you just say well go ahead and put him on first base when a ball game is in the sixth inning and it's nothing to nothing and it could be a one run game. But here with Donovan coming up next, a real good hitter it isn't that easy a decision to make. Let's see what they're going to do. They're going to walk him. Ball one. Ball two. Here comes ball three. This is the fifth base on balls of the night. This one intentional. It's going to bring up Donovan. He's got a chance here to help his own cause. Standing off to the side of the plate, fidgeting with that hitter's rosin bag. Now he throws it back to Minoso. He's up in there with two men on. Ooh, and he's he's hit here with a pitch ball. 
Donovan is hit on the shoulder with a pitch ball, and down he went in a heap. And here is the trainer out. The runners have advanced. Now Donovan is still standing off to the side of the plate and brushing himself off. Well, let's see what's going to happen here. The trainer is out there. Why doesn't he go to first? The runners have moved to second and third, and Donovan is still standing at the plate. Now he's picking the bat up. So Donovan, in a pitch thrown right at him, evidently as he helped, as he fell away, that ball didn't hit him, and the runners advanced, and it's charged as a pass ball on Yogi Berra. But it looked to me as though it punched him right on the shoulder. It, as he hit the ground, he fell in a heap on the ground, the ball popped off the glove. Here's the next pitch, a swing and a miss, one and one. But it looked from here as though he was hit right on the shoulder with the ball. He fell in the dirt, and boy, he really dropped. And Yogi Berra, evidently the ball hit the tip of his glove and rolled off a foot or two to the right of the plate. Here's a swing and a foul tip, one and two. So with the runners advancing, Busby going to third, and Lawler going to second, it is a pass ball on the catcher. And a one and two count now on Donovan. So boy could really make a hit in this spot payoff. Ball one and a strike two count on Donovan. Donovan walking away from the plate again. He was visibly shaken up by that pitch right at him. And how he ever missed getting hit is a miracle. Ball one and a strike two count. And a swing and a little tap on the ground. Third baseman Perry fires that ball and he's out of the jam. Donovan hit a ground ball to the third baseman Perry. And Perry fired that ball to Scourin and got him. And it retires the side. So in that inning, there were no runs. No hits, two walks, and two men were left on the base. And the score, at the end of the first half of the sixth inning, Donovan is going back to the dugout. He was visibly shaken up by that pitch and covered with dirt. And how he kept from being hit is a miracle. The score at the end of the first half of the sixth inning, the White Sox, no runs, four hits. The Yankees, no runs, five hits. Donovan is just coming out of the dugout. In the American League, Boston 3 and Cleveland 1 at the end of 6th inning. Detroit and Baltimore 1-1 one and one at the end of the 1st inning. Kansas City 2 and Washington nothing at the end of 3 innings. Brooklyn 4, Cincinnati nothing at the end of 3 innings. Pittsburgh 1 and St. Louis 1 at the end of 4 innings. All night games. That hand is for Yogi Berra. With just a few mingled raspberries mixed in, Yogi's had a rough time tonight. Yogi Berra. Donovan. Taking all the time in the world get himself relaxed and back in shape after that shocker. Walking around out there behind the mound right now. Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle, and Scourin are coming up in that order. Now the first pitch to Berra. Spike right down the middle. Well, 
Well, unfortunately, that pitch that burned through that time of Donovan was one that I told you he was using his fastball sparingly here tonight. And that was a... Here's a swing and a long fly ball down the right field line. It's going to go in, and it's a home run for Yogi Berra. home run into the right field stand, his 17th of the year, and his 67th run batted in. And so the scoreless deadlock has been broken here in the last of the sixth inning. Now George Carroll and Lawler and Fox are all talking with Donovan. Has the rosin bag again, and he's fidgeting around. The score is one to nothing in favor of New York on a home run by Yogi Berra. Here's Mickey Mantle. The first pitch to him is a fastball. It's low outside, a ball, ball one. No doubt that that near beaning unnerved Donovan plenty. The next pitch to Mickey Mantle. Here's a ground ball to drop ball. Up with the ball to run to the bag. He's out. One away. Here's Garin. And as I said before, too, that takes nothing away from Barra. Everybody has the same chance at these walls, which are just a short distance away down the foul line. But then... They curve out very sharply and very deep. That ball, I imagine, went over somewhere around the 335-foot mark. It was over close to the line. First pitch to Star and lower ball. So the Yankees draw first blood. They're leading one to nothing in the sixth. And they swing a line drive hit to left field. And also up with that ball... Fires it back in. There was a hard line drive in the left field for Scour. For the Yankees, that's hit number seven. And that is going to bring up the third baseman, Andy Carey. Been up twice. He's one for two. Andy Carey. The outfield is playing Carey straight away. Quick throw to first. Scouring back in time. A homer by Yogi Berra has put the Yankees out in front. One to nothing. They've made seven hits to four hits. Time called. Pitcher was ready to throw that ball, but the plate umpire McKinley had called time. Flaherty talking to the base runner. He's the umpire at first. Charlock at second. Barry is the umpire at third. A quick throw to first base, and it's back in time. Now Donovan. Kicking that pitching rubber. Can't seem to get it set to suit him. Now he's ready. The next pitch to carry right down the middle. Spike call. There was a perfect pitch right across the knees. And it's strike one to carry. 257 hitter going in with 35 runs batted in. Already, that's a swing and a miss. Strike two. Bob 
Bob Sir, utility outfielder for the Yankees, pitched batting practice tonight for about an hour. The thing that surprised me was how he got the ball over the plate. Two strikes on Carey with a base runner on first. That's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Scarron stays at first base as Carey strikes out. And that is going to bring up the pitcher, Tommy Burns. That is the fifth strikeout. And if somebody told you a year ago that at this stage of the 1955 pennant race, Byrne would be, would be winning the ball games, and Turley and Ford would be getting shellacked and knocked out time after time. You would have said they were crazy, but that's exactly what's happening. Here is a ball. It's in close. Byrne is after his ninth win against only two losses, while Turley can't finish a ball game, and Ford is also getting his bumps. Next pitch to burn. That is a high fly ball in the short center field. The center fielder coming on fast, and he grabs that ball for the arm. Busby's cap flew off as he raced in, but he kept right on coming, and Fox, who also had run out, goes to get his cap, and here's Busby crossing third without his hat, and Fox, coming up in the rear, hands it to him, and that was the third out. Boy, he ran in a half a block for that ball. One run, two hits, and one man left on the field. At the end of six full innings of play, the Yankees one run, seven hits, two errors. The White Sox no runs, four hits, no errors. Bernard O'Donnell and the gang at the Elks Club down at Ottawa, Illinois, all pulling for the White Sox. Here's Minnie Minoso up to lead off. Come on, let's get this fellow some runs. He's pitching terrific ball. Minoso has flied out to left field, to right field, and to right field in three tries. And the pitch, a ball way off the corner, ball one. You know, when Tommy Burns sent Donovan down that time, he thought he'd hit him, too. He ran into the plate to inquire about him. And also, there's a high fly ball that's going to curve, and it's going to go foul down the left field line. One of the very few fast, real fastballs that he's thrown, and that pitch was right at Donovan's head. Boy, he went down in a heap. But Yogi had stuck his glove in front of him, and the ball had just picked the glove and rolled off a couple of feet to the right of the plate. Donovan was sure unnerved by it all. Come on, Minnie, start it off. Minnie Minoso, 260 hitter with 35 runs batted in. And a swing and a foul up in the stands here to the right. One and two. Now, the White Sox offense tonight has been a single in the first inning by Kell, a single in the second inning by Busby, and two hits in the third inning, one by Fox and one by Kell, four singles. And also trying to get it started here in the seventh inning. And a swing and a ground ball to short. Picked off by Hunter, the peg, he's out, one away. Minoso grounds right at Hunter, and Hunter threw him out. One away. Here's Nelson Fox. Fouled out, singled, and bounced out. Nelly Fox, number two in the back of his gray uniform, Cal in the on deck circle. And the pitch. 
a swing foul ball on the wire here to our left. One strike. Let's pause for station identification. This is WCFL, the voice of labor in Chicago. Tommy Byrne roughing a new baseball around in his hands. Here comes the next pitch, a swing and an easy tap to the mound. There's the peg. He's out by 30 feet. That's going to bring up George Kell. Two hits and a base on balls. Up three times on three times. Better. Left-hander Tommy Byrne leans forward on his left foot and a slow ball strike around the net. Came in there as big as a balloon. Slow ball just caught the outside corner at the knee. Strike one. Yankees are leading one to nothing in the seventh inning on a home run by Yogi Berra. Slow ball and a long foul down the left field now. Strike two. Now the plate umpire McKinley steps out with the whisk room and cleans the plate. The Yankees have one run, seven hits, two errors. White Sox, no runs, four hits, no errors. Tommy Byrne ruddies again. Leans forward on his left foot. Now Cal steps up. Boston three and Cleveland one at the end of seven innings. Here comes the pitch. Slow ball and a ground ball to second. Picked off by the second baseman. The peg, he's out. Tommy Byrne came right back with another slow ball. Kell tried to hit it into right field, but bounced to McDougal. An easy play, and he was thrown out. Three up and three down, and the White Sox have not had a hit. In one, two, three, four innings off of Mr. Byrne. And Dick Donovan, who is pitching a fine game. Boys just can't get any runs for him. The score, at the end of the first half of the seventh inning, the New York Yankees won, our White Sox, nothing. Billy Hunter stepping up to lead off. Billy Hunter popped out and flied up in two tries. He's facing Donovan for the third time. And Donovan has just picked up the rosin bag for the fourth time. Here's the pitch. Close a ball. Donovan, who has pitched marvelous balls for the White Sox this year, won 13 games and lost three. He's beaten the Yankees three times. Here's a curve and a ground ball to Chico's left. Stabs it. Up with the ball. There's the peg. He is out. Fine play by Carrascal, who raced back a second base, came up with a gloved hand stab on a ground ball and threw the batter Hunter out. Here's Nora. They hit, and he struck out twice. Noren batting left-handed. Now the wind-up in the pitch. A little bit too low. Ball one. Ball one. Number 25 on the back of his white uniform. 
Here's a swing and a very high foul that's coming back and going out of play. Sammy White just hit a home run for the Red Sox with nobody on in the eighth inning. And they're leading Cleveland 4-1. to one. Ball one and a spike one count for Noren. Donovan gets the rosin bag. Now he's ready. That's the swing and a high foul into the upper deck off here to the left. And a ball one and a spike two count. This game is in the last of the seventh. There's only one run been scored. Sixth inning, Yogi Berra, the leadoff man, homered down the right field foul line. The ball stayed in and went into the stands for a home run. The outfield is playing Noren to pull. They're around to the right. He's a pretty good spray hitter, this fella. There is a fly ball to left field. Manoso back. He's under this ball. Has it two up. Here is the right fielder, Elston Howard. Struck out in the first, walked in the third, singled in the fifth inning, came in with a 311 batting average and 27 runs batted in. Playing right field. up. First pitch to Howard. A swing and a towering fly ball that's foul. Kell going over near the stands and reaches in and makes a one-hand stand for the end. George Kell went over from the bag to the stands, leaned on the rail and reached into the among the fans and grabbed that ball in his gloved hand for the end. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. The end of seven innings. The Yankees, one run, seven hits, two errors. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, and no errors. Well, fans, we're going into the eighth inning with Big Walt Ropo coming up to lead off. Popped out, walked, and hit into a force out. Burn getting ready. Here is the first pitch, a swing and a line foul down the left field line. Well hit, but he over pulled it. And it went foul in the stand. Game tomorrow at 2 o'clock New York time, 1 o'clock Chicago time, 12.55 to all of our network stations. Tomorrow it's going to be a right-hander, Harry Bird, against a left-hander, Hetty Eddie Lopez. Walt Tropo, number eight in the back of his gray uniform, is the leadoff batter here in the eighth inning. Slow ball and a swing and a fly ball to straightaway center. It's going to be caught out there. One away. He uses that slow ball with tremendous effect. Dropo lunged for that ball that time has looked as big as a basketball coming up there and hit an easy fly ball to center field. Here's Neiman. Neiman has been up three times, 0 for 3. One out and nobody on. Fastball outside, high a ball. Now, the last hit for the White Sox came with two out and a man on in the third inning when Cal singled, sending Fox to third. Ropo walked, loading the bases, but Neiman bounced out. The Sox have not had a hit since the third inning. Slow ball, it's outside, up ball, ball two. Frank Sullivan has gone all the way for the Red Sox tonight and has subdued the Indians. That game is in the ninth inning. 
2-0 count here on Neiman. The next pitch, a fastball is in the dirt. And a walk, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, is every bit as good as a hit. Anything to get on against this fellow. Three or nothing count on Neiman. Stocky right-hand hitter, and a strike gets right across the knee. Ball three and a strike one count. Burn fidgeting around, taking time. he decides to step off the rubber again and gets right back on it. Here comes the next pitch and it's way outside a ball. He walks it. Well, that time a very high outside pitch. Rivera's going to run for him. That puts a base runner on and that is the sixth walk. One of those intentional. And he's going to bring up Busby, who has a hit and a walk. Here's the announcement. Center fielder Jimmy Busby, number five in his gray uniform, is in the batter's box. With a speed ball, Rivera on first. Here's the pitch, and it's in the dirt. A, lo a low pitch, ball one. Number 23, veteran left-hander Tommy Burns. Used to be known as a wild man, but no more. This fellow's got to the point where he can get the ball over the plate. Next pitch, a swing and a foul. It's on the wire. One and one. See, there's a tremendous hole between the left fielder and the center fielder right over the shortstop's head. If he could ever hit one out there, it'd roll all the way out there. There's a sign out there that says 457 feet. If he could ever hit that ball right over the shortstop's head where he's standing now, that ball would roll a block. Norrin is playing him way over, and the center fielder, Mickey Mantle, is about two feet to the right field side of the center line. So it makes a tremendous hole out in left center field. Byrne has stepped off the rubber again and gone to the rosin bag. Yankees are leading one to nothing in the eighth inning on a home run by Yogi Berra. Here's Byrne again getting his sign. And the next pitch, a ball way outside of the letters, two and one. A little wild streak here would help anything to get on. Very big ball game, and the Yankees are leading on a home run by the Yogi Man. He won the last game for them Sunday with a home run against Kansas City. Here comes the next pit runner going down, a hit and run play. The ball, a fly ball to the right, going to be a double play. The throw in the first, and it is a double play with the sign on, Rivera running, Busby hit a fly ball to short right field, Elston Howard coming on was in great position to throw, fired that ball to Scourin, and Rivera was doubled off to retire the shot. A double play on the 107th of the year for the Yankees, no runs, no hits, a walk, nobody left. And the score at the end of the first half of the eighth inning, the New York Yankees won, and the White Sox, nothing. Jim Rivera is now playing in right field. And coming up for the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth, McDougal. He has a hit, a strikeout, and a force out. First pitch, curve, strike around the knee. With a fast man on first base, the White Sox had the hit and run on with Rivera running. 
And Busby trying to hit that ball to right field, did hit it to right field, but it was a low fly ball, and Howard, coming on, grabbed that ball at his knees and fired it into first for a double play. Here's a swing and a foul tip, strike two. Nobody on and nobody out. The Yankees are leading one to nothing. On one run, seven hits, two errors. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, no errors. Donovan getting ready. Leans forward on his right foot. Here comes the pitch and a swing and a foul on the wire. Donovan had won eight straight before dropping a decision to Boston in a relief stint on Saturday. Has three wins, no losses in competition with the Yankees this year. Winning 5-3, to 2-1, to one, and 8-6. to six. The other two losses suffered by Donovan were in games in which his teammates were shut out. He has pitched four shutouts, has an earned run average going into this game of 2.80. And here tonight he's held these powerhouse Yankees to one run. And a curve and a ground ball to third. Cal gloves it. There's the peg across. High, but Grupo got it. Got back in the bag. He's out. One away. Cal let loose of a high throw, but Grupo jumped to the foul side of the bag, grabbed the ball, and got back onto the bag in time to get the out. Here the hand is for Yogi Berra. Let off in the sixth inning with a home run into the right field seat. And so far, that is the only run of the game. The first pitch to Yogi Berra went way over the catcher and the batter and up against the screen. And that's the second one that Dick has let slip. That just got away from him. he set. Ball way outside. Ball two. One out and nobody on in the last of the eighth inning of a one to nothing game. First game of a three game series. White Sox move from here to Washington for a night game on Friday, an afternoon game on Saturday and a big doubleheader on Sunday. Donovan leans forward on his right foot. That is a ball off the corner above the knee, ball three. One to nothing, eighth inning. Yankees lead. Donovan and Byrne have gone all the way. Yankees one run on seven hits. White Sox no runs, four hits. The pitch in there on the inside corner, a strike. Three one. Yogi registered a mild complaint, so the crowd takes its cue from there and starts to howl a little bit at the umpire. Ball three and a strike one count on the Yogi man. Now the wind up and the next pitch to him. Ball four. Walk through. Mantle walked in the first inning, grounded to Fox in the fourth inning, went out on an unassisted play to the first baseman in the sixth inning. When you can hold this dynamite pack lineup to one run, you're really pitching. Well, the White Sox try as hard as they can here tonight, just cannot seem to get Donovan 
and he runs. A ball is outside at the knee. Now, in his other starts against this club, the White Sox have done pretty well for him. They got him five runs in the first game, two runs in the second, and then got him eight runs in the third. But tonight, they just can't seem to get those hits against Burns. Mantle a big swing and a foul back on the wall. A ball one and a strike one count. Score the widely heralded left-hander who got a tremendous build-up the beginning of this year coming up with Cleveland and had almost 400 strikeouts in the association has found the American League quite different. He was battered out again tonight by the Boston Red Sox. Ball one and a strike one count. Here is a ball that's low. The Yankees, we were down there in the dugout tonight, were high in praise of Billy Pierce. Boys thought that in the All-Star game, he was a standout over anybody. Right now, the way he's pitching, he is just about the number one left-hander in this league. Ball two and a strike one count. A swing and a very high fly ball, but short in right field. Fox can get it. Rivera can get it. Fox is going to, and he does. Mantle hit that ball a tremendously high fly ball in the short right field that Nellie Fox and Rivera probably could have had a little chat waiting for that ball to come down but it finally did and Fox grabbed it for the out. Here's Scarron hit into a force play in the first inning with the bases loaded. Doubled in the fourth inning and was out trying for third. Singled the center in the sixth inning. First pitch to him. Outside and low, a ball. Ball one. Bill Scarron, first baseman of the New York Yankees, bats right-handed as Casey Stengel has gone away from the two-platoon system. Here's a ball. It's close. Formally, up until a couple of weeks ago against right-handers, he had Collins in right field and Robinson at first base. But now he's staying with Scourin and Elston Howard, two right-hand hitters against all types of pitching. Two and nothing count on Scourin. Guy's got the build of a blacksmith. Yogi on first, a curve and a ground ball to short. Chico, big hop, easy play, force at second. At the end of eight full innings of play, the Yankees, one run, seven hits, two errors. The White Sox, no runs, four hits, and no errors. Well, sir, this ball game has moved into its final stanza. The closing chapters as the White Sox still try to score here on the former teammate left-hander Tommy Byrne. And here is Chico Carrasquel. Come on, Chico. He struck out in the second, grounded out and popped out. And he is the leadoff man in the ninth inning. Here's the first pitch. And it's a good curve at the letters to strike. Never too late in a ball game, as you all know. Lead is only a run. Here's the next pitch, a swing and a high foul. It's coming back, and it's out of play. Remember to stay tuned after the ball game for all the scores. A lot of the National League games are not even half over as yet. Here are the White Sox trying to get get into the score column with Byrne. And Chico, right-hand hitter up there. He's in the hole with two strikes on him. 
Here comes the pitcher. Swing and a hit to left field. It's going to drop in. The left fielder goes for the ball. And let's see. I think they're going to call him out. He rolled over. And there's a tremendous catch by Norrin. There was a low-line drive that Norrin left his feet, rolled over. And it looked like he had lost the ball. But he came up with the ball after rolling over completely out there. And the second base umpire had run out and called him out. And there is the play of the night. There was a tremendous, unbelievable play by Norris. Of what looked like a sure hit into left center field. He dove, left his feet and dove through the air. Rolled completely over. And came up with that ball in one of the finest catches I've seen all year long. So there was real highway robbery as Norin comes up with a tremendous play. Here's Lawler and a strike right across the way. Well, I seldom call a play a hit when it isn't a hit, but that had all the earmarks of a hit. And I never thought that Norin could catch that ball. He dove. He must have gone through the air four or five feet and rolled completely over. The crowd... Everybody in the park stood up. That was easily the play of the night. Now the next pitch to Sherman Lawler and a ball. It's in too close. If that ball had gotten away, that would have been it. If that ball would have gone all the way out to that auxiliary scoreboard in left center field. Absolutely amazing catch. Lawler is hit with a pitch ball. Yogi started to argue. Yogi started to argue with the umpire at the plate on that high inside pitch that he hadn't been hit. And the umpire at the plate, short of patience, said, go on down to first base and walked away from Yogi and he wouldn't talk anymore about it. So Lawler is hit with a pitch ball and we're going to get a pinch runner for him, Connie Jones. Going to get a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Bob Kennedy coming out. Bob Kennedy is stepping into the batter's box. Batting 229 with 14 runs batted in, four doubles, two triples, and one home run. Come on, Bob. This fellow's come up with some very timely hits in the last couple of weeks. Connie Johnson at first base, running for Lawler. Bob Kennedy in the batter's box. Slow ball. It's high in close above. One man on. Here's Byrne again getting a sign. Looks over at first. And a tap to the pitcher. Back to second. Maybe a double play. Out over the first. Out the game goal. Taps to the pitcher. Burn turned and fired to second base. Back over to first base, and it's their second double play of the night. Their 108th of the year, and the ball game is over. On that ball, Kennedy was backing away. He didn't mean to hit it. The ball hit the end of the bat and dribbled out toward the mound, and Burn turned it into a fast double play. So there is a tough ending. To what looked like a great start of the inning. Won a circus catch in one of the greatest I have ever seen by Norin. Took an extra base hit away from Chico Carrascal to start the inning. How he got that ball, I will never know. But it was easily one of the greatest catches of the year. And I'm sure that the Chicago sports writers will bear me out. That was really something. Looked absolutely impossible, but he grabbed it, rolled over... And that was the play of the night. And as it turned out, that was the ball game. 
And so, the final score here at New York, the New York Yankees won, and the White Sox nothing. Well, in reviewing this ball game, one swing by Yogi Berra is the difference in this ball game between winning and losing. And a tremendous catch by Noren. Those were the highlights offensively and defensively in the game. Nora's, uh, Noren's diving, somersaulting catch out there of what looked like it was going to be a double or a triple certainly was the defensive standpoint of the game as far as the Yankees are concerned because the Sox there would have had a man on second or if that ball had gone by him it had gone all the way out to that fence out there possibly a triple. He took a gamble and he got the ball. And Yogi Berra's swing and long fly ball into the right field seats in the sixth inning was the game. Now the Yankees had three, four, five, six, seven, eight men left. The White Sox had one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine men left. The winning pitcher in the ball game was Tommy Burns continues to confound the experts with his fourth or fifth comeback attempt and this is his best he's better now than he ever was now he knows what he's doing and he can get the ball over the plate he's the winner tonight to make his record nine and two Dick Donovan gets the loss here and as, as I said many times tonight when you hold this powerhouse Yankee ball club to one run in their ballpark you really deserve to win but tonight the White Sox, who got him five runs, two runs, and eight runs before in competition with the Yankees, just found Mr. Byrne, a former teammate, a real conundrum here, and they just could not get a run. 